Hello, everyone. Welcome to <laughs> Streaming Hub Radio. I am Sage Stevens, the host of Shout Out with Sage. And today I have an actor who is just in LA and we were met at this event and here I find out he's like nominated. Well, his, the film he acted in was nominated. Let me just do that over again because I didn't shut off my phone. I'm so sorry. He was nominated or his film Invincible was nominated for an Oscar, an Academy Award for best short film was it best, yes best live action short film. best live action short and yes. today i would like to welcome to the show ralph prosper hi ralph how are you all the way from montreal happy to be here uh i miss la already but you know it feels good to be home too okay and what was your biggest takeaway from being in la my biggest takeaway from being in LA is that I have a lot of work to do. And I have, to, <laughs> I have a lot of work to do and I have to keep on working even harder. Um, and that I'm also um, heading in the right direction, mm. you know, because I, I met a lot of people that saw the film, people in the industry that really gave me a lot of uh, a lot of respect uh, uh, for, for my craft. And they really appreciated my work. And the beauty of it all is that even though I was not speaking English, mm. They could. They, they. They were. They were. They were. They were driven, and they were attracted, and they. And they really believed uh, in in what I was doing, which was great. Right. I actually watched the film Invincible. I was at a screening before Christmas, and yes, it's a very moving, powerful film. The lead character is a, a young boy who's going through some mental issues and being very yep. rebellious. And you played the. What was exactly? Played, I'm a social worker. I'm a social right. worker. And uh, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying my best to uh, help him see that there's there's beauty out of life, but you need some type of discipline. You need some type of balance in order to reach new heights. Yeah, it was a very moving film. I, I mean, it, it it hit me really hard. It was very well done. It was it wasn't fast paced, but it, it had a great tone and it moved along well. How did you end up getting that role? Well, interestingly enough, my agent uh, sent me and uh, she sent me a, an email and, and, you know, this was a short film and they didn't have a lot of budget. And she said to me, listen, uh, here's the script. Uh, did you have a read. And if it's if it's of any interest for you, uh, you don't even need to do an audition. They actually want to have a, they want to have a Zoom call with you. They want to mm -hmm. have a conversation with you. So we had a Zoom call and uh, we had a great conversation. And what you, what you must, what you must know uh, is that uh, when I'm not uh, working on a movie set or on a stage, uh, I happen to be a substitute teacher at a high school. Oh wow! So I've been doing that for 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 quite some time now, and uh, that that experience itself is what I shared with the the director of the movie, uh, and how much I related to the story, and I could understand what the character, the lead character, was going through, but I could also understand what the social worker was trying to accomplish. And uh, from that point on, I got the role. So what's your experience then, like if as a high school teacher, so you had all those experiences, did you have similar students as oh, the as the role, I, as, a man, as a boy who played the main role? Oh yeah, no question. I mean, I work in a, in a, in a very tough high school, public high school, where you have a lot of kids uh, that are often left to themselves and often we have to we play the role of parents uh we play the role of um uh what's the word i'm looking for um someone that you look up like to a mentor mentor, okay. mentor yeah. yes you play the role of a mentor and you help them see um see life in a different angle mm -hmm. and i have to say that you know that's 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 probably the number one thing i like doing as a substitute teacher you know it's it's to actually help those kids find other ways, other avenues to grow mm -hmm. other than doing bad things. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you shared that with the film director. I and did. Vincent, correct? Was his name? Yeah, Vincent, Vincent yeah. René Lorty, yes. yes. So Vincent was, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll let you do the French. My French <laughs> is very rusty. I did grow up in Canada, but it's that's super fine. rusty. That's fine. Um, so you shared your experiences with Vincent. Was he... Um, what's the word I'm looking for now? He was 
uh, accepting of those uh, of that feedback? He was, yeah, he was very accepting of the feedback, but he also, uh, I, I, his eyes lit up because I, I really felt like uh, he had found someone that, 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 was, that was actually speaking his language and that was sort of seeing or had the same vision that he had for the film. So that was great. It was, it was, a, nice, it was a nice little marriage uh, yeah. in that particular moment. Yeah, I'll never forget it. And he'll never forget it too. Right. Did you have a lot of time in rehearsal? Like did you, with the young boy, adult, male, the young guy, did, did <laughs> Because he wasn't really a child, but he wasn't a man. Like, I don't know. No, he was, he was the teenager, the teenager, yeah, right? the teenager. Was, that was the word I was looking for. Yeah, I mean, you, so, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, you got to understand the kid at the time, the kid was probably like 14, 15. And it was his mm -hmm. first, it was his first uh, acting, acting gig. It was his first uh, 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 experience in the, in, in the professional world. And we had, we had, they had rehearsals with him also. But right. I, remember, I remember going over our scenes together and doing a, a bit of script analysis. Uh, and also uh, script editing too, because right. some of the things that, th that were written, I was like, ah, maybe we should, you know, say it this way, say it that way. And uh, it, w it was a nice, it was a nice collective effort. Okay. Uh, every time we had rehearsal, it was nice. And I remember actually having that conversation with Vincent uh, mm -hmm. when we got the Oscar nomination. I said, one of the things that we did for this film is that we paid attention to detail. And when you pay attention to detail, you, the, the, all, of, all of a sudden, the movie takes a different shape. It takes a bigger volume okay. because we're, we're because you're thinking about moment to moment to moment. You don't want to you don't want to cheat the audience, but we also the actors we want to portray reality as much as possible. Right. Yeah. So, what type of things would you work on as an actor to get that type of specificity in the roles? Uh, a couple of things, like for instance, me. Every time that I get ready for 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 a, you know a, a movie or whatever, I, I try to I try to think about different people, an image, you know. Uh, for instance, I had I had the opportunity to meet Terry Crews. Uh, oh yeah. You know, these yeah. past couple of days at the Oscars, and Terry Crews, you know, although he's a big dude, you know, he's he's got a big heart. He's yes. very caring, but if but you don't want to get Terry Crews mad. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. So, yes. so, so it's, it's one of those situations where you look at him and then you're like, "Man, he's cool." But then, if you say something wrong or you try to hit you or, or you try to hurt someone in this close right. circle, you better walk away or you better run for your life. <laughs> and so, he was one of those people, you know, in terms of built, in terms of in terms of uh, um, physical uh, expression that I thought about for for that type right. of film. For instance, that's one way of of, of doing it. But also, I use my own personal experiences as a substitute teacher in terms of the language, the way I spoke to the student. Mm. Yeah, so that that was a lot of that. Right. So, do you think the language and the tone, especially like I know when people talk to me in a certain tone, you know, you're not, yeah, you're not going to get a good reaction. Do you think that's like really important as a, like for your role and as a teacher? Absolutely, but you can't just be that. Right. You also have to be that guy that if the if the kid does something right, you, you have to change your demeanor. You have to be that the you have to become the loving parent. You have to become the joker. You be have to you have to become the caretaker. Mm. You know, there's there's many, many, many degrees to 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 uh to uh portraying that type of character. And I I and I tried my best to bring some of those right. elements throughout the scenes. I see. Why did you begin acting? How did you start as an actor? Whoa, that's a great question. So, um, so this is my, 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 the very first experience I've ever had. And I, and I, and going back, uh, through therapy and through different exercises I had in grad school, um, in, 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 in the, the theater conservatory I was, it made me realize that my first experience and, and the day I knew I was going to be an actor, mm -hmm. I was probably five years old. There was a there was a um, there was this play that was going on at my school, and we were all sitting down in the gym, and the lead actor who was wearing a costume or some sort was was doing his thing, and I remember with vivid memory looking up at him, hypnotizing the whole place, and I was mesmerized. I couldn't believe that one person 
could just completely take control, not oh, by wow. screaming, not by, you know, and I was, you know, I was sort of a brat as a kid. So, I, <laughs> you know, it, you know, my parents, you know, it wasn't always easy for them because I was, I was always moving around. But in this one instance, I was, I was focused. I didn't want to move. And I was like, in my head, because at that age, how can you, how can you really know what you want to do? Right. But I remember, I remember telling myself, what this guy is doing, I want to do. So that was my very first experience uh, uh, with the notion of acting, and I never forgot it. But it went to sleep for a long time, but okay. I never forgot it. Yeah. So, so it went to sleep, and then what happened to activate it? You know what? When acting is a passion of mine, and so every time that I would, you know, find myself watching a film or seeing a play or listening to a song, I would always have these visuals. It, I would always you know, create this, this, uh, uh, um, this situation. And I would play a, in which I was in, right? I was always this drama guy, but never <laughs> on the inside, it's true. Always dreamy, like even, even in high school, in classes, I would just go into my brain and just have these visualizations of things that I would want to do. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, in hindsight, you know, the, 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 the force of your subconsciousness is so strong and often we deny it. We don't pay attention yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, squish we it don't, down. Yeah, we don't listen to it. And I didn't listen to it for a long time. And also, you know, I come from a family of scholars, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, it that was not the avenue. It's not that they right. were, it's not, it's not that they were against it, but it's not something that they knew. Not, mm -hmm. So it wasn't something that they were, they were going to encourage. And I never, it took me a while to find my own courage to say, hey, this is what I want to do. And when I did that, no one was mad. I think they all knew, sort of, sort of speak. <laughs> they you knew know. you would get there eventually. Yeah, they just weren't sure when. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then so yeah, and my dad was like, well, you know, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna be, you better be the best at it. That was his right. challenge. Right, right, yeah. right. Yes. What part of acting do you like the best? Like why why? Ooh. What's the best part for you? These are great questions. The best oh. part of act, great questions. Yeah. The best part of acting is to be able to be somebody else and do things that you can't do in real life. <laughs> That's the truth. Okay. That's the truth. Right. You yell in public or do whatever. Yes. That do you wouldn't whatever. normally. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and also you could just, you're free and you won't get in trouble for it. <laughs> right. You know, it's true. Think definitely, about it. definitely, yeah. definitely. And what's what's one of the biggest challenges though that you've experienced, like getting your career going or where you're at now? I think the number one challenge for me is having uh, knowing yourself first mm -hmm. of all, knowing yourself, being honest with yourself in terms of what you can or cannot do, or what you're afraid of. And just overcoming fears. That that's that, that was my number one, and it's still a struggle today. It's gotten right. better, you know. But you know, the actor's life is never guaranteed. So right. one day, you know, you're, you're you're doing great stuff, and then woof, it's quiet, right? Right. Or or you know, or the other way around. So that's the number one thing. That's the number one uh, challenge for me that I've gotten better at. Uh, but second of all, um, to be perceived as an actor. Not a black actor, not a green actor, not some, you know, just a an beginner actor. or an, whatever. Yeah, just, just, you're an actor, yeah, just, you're a working just, actor. I'm a working actor. So it's right. got nothing to do, but because often it's too often in, you know, in our profession, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you know, you get stereotyped mm -hmm. in certain, in certain situations. And, uh, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with that. And it took me a while to say, no, okay. I, I don't want to. I don't you want to don't do want anymore. you don't want all those other labels attached no, to you. I no, understand. no, 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 no. Yeah. What would your advice be to then someone who was starting out as an actor who wanted to, you know, pursue oh, oh, a career? Are we, are we talking about a black actor or are we talking about just actor in general? Uh you can answer both ways. I think both ways are important. Okay. So for the actor in general, uh if you really if if you really think that you that that you have what it takes to become an actor. First and foremost, go to act, take an acting class. Right. 
Like, you know, do something, do something because, you know, in this day and age, especially the younger generation, you know, everybody's really more, uh, you, cause, cause, uh, because of social media, people show so many things. It's the world of make-believe and they don't, they, they don't realize that those people that are there now were, they, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were on the other side before. And, you know, they didn't reach stardom just like that. There was right. a point in their careers where they had to work hard and they had to make stuff happen for themselves. And then after that, things got better, right. you know? But I think the number one thing for a general actor is to just take an acting class. Do, you know, try to see, because it's, 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 not, it's not easy at all. And sometimes right. just, you know, you, yeah, okay, you're good looking. Yeah, but yes, you know, yes, that but that being good looking doesn't give you gravitas, it doesn't make you, um, well, that's it. it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't so yeah, like it's like the the actor you watched when you were a child, that person had presence and they had charisma mm -hmm. and they had gravitas and they captured a room, and good looks alone doesn't necessarily do that, like, there's other yeah. factors in there, but a lot of people think that good looks can, you know, get them in the front door. And well, yeah. I mean, it, uh, it can't uh, hurt, but you still have to care. You know, if you can't walk and talk and right. chew gum, so, then you're exactly. In so that's so that's why I say for the general actor, you know, right. just at least take a class and see what happens right. and whatever. But for the black actor, hmm. it's a little different. The black actor, it's just it's there's a couple of things. First of all, you don't want to fall into the stereotype. Stereotype is if you want to spend the rest of your career being the gangster, yeah, being so, the secure the security officer. Being the drill sergeant, or uh, 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 the the, the jailmate, yeah. or the athlete, you know, uh, okay, you could be just, just like the general actor, go pump some weights, stay in shape, and you know, become an extra, and eventually, you know, you might get those those subpar roles, but you won't you you won't ever be taken seriously other than the roles that I just uh, that right. I just said. Now, if if it's a craft, and you know, now I really suggest taking going to acting class, going to theater class, going to script analysis class, you know, learning about the craft and also find ways to show them that you're way more than the color of your skin, right? And then once once you get to that point, then all these doors open around you, right? Because they're not, it's, it's not something that, that they're not really accustomed to it. But once they know it, and they know your skill set, and, and then everything changes. You know, it's a bit different. It's getting better, but there's a reality to it. Right. You mentioned doors open. What doors were open for you as you've been? Like, were there any serendipitous moments involved, or as to get certain roles? I mean, <laughs> I have a funny story. So uh, seven years ago, or eight years ago, uh, I kept on getting these cop roles. Cop roles. Right, right, right. You know, a day a day of shooting or here, a day of shooting there. And uh, I remember going to an audition for um, this new TV show that was that was that was about to come out in Montreal, and I was uh, an audition for one of the lead uh, detectives. Mm. And I, man, I prepared and I prepared <laughs> and I prepared and I I got in there. I was ready to rock and roll. Right. And so when I got in there, uh, the casting director who's there, I'll never forget it. So I do so I do my scene. And then she's like, How come I don't see you on TV? That was her reaction. Really? How come I don't see you on Yeah? So how come I don't see you on TV? How come we don't see and then and then could you just imagine? I'm trying to get there. You can't just say, Hey lady, you're right. What's up with that? You know, <laughs> I should be on TV. <laughs> I don't know. You know why you tell you know, me? So you can't so you can't really react that way. But right, I was, right. and I remember just being there, like, I went like this. I don't know. I don't know why I'm not on TV. You yeah, tell me. Yeah. Saying? Okay. So what <laughs> am I supposed to do? So, so she was like, okay, thank you very much for coming. And then I walked away and in, in my head, I was like, oh, well, you know, yeah. I gave her another, gave her a, another audition next. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> and then uh, a couple, a couple of days later or a week later, whatever, my agent calls me and she goes, Hey, you didn't get the lead role. But you got casted in a supporting role for the show. Uh, you're shooting on Monday, and in my head, I'm like, "Oh, okay, all right. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll be the cop. I'll be the I'll be the desk the desk officer." Yeah, yeah. You know, they gave me they get you know I, I don't get to wear you know uh, um, regular a clothes. Right. I'll have to. I'll, no, uniform. I mean uh, I'll have to wear a uniform. Right. Okay, 
been there, done that. So I remember my first day, I get on set and I do my scene. And then in my head, I was like, okay, hey, thank you guys. It was great. And she's like, well, what do you mean? Where are you going? You're, you're, you're shooting tomorrow, you're shooting the next day, and you're shooting next week. And I'm like, what? What, what, do, you, what do you mean? She's like, at the time, I didn't even know what a series regular meant. <laughs> right? So yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. So I'm like, regular means you're regularly on it. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, sure. And then six years later, six you're years still, later, yeah. you know, I'm still there. And you know, my role wasn't big, but it was, it was such a blessing in disguise because I was in, I was in a lot of scenes and I saw the lead actors. I mean, I got to tell you, that show was the number one TV show in Montreal. It was called District 31. So it was uh, happening. Yeah, I've heard I, of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, we would the, the, the lead actors would have to go through 40 pages of text every day. Wow. It was nuts. And it was like one or two takes, tops. Whether you had five pages or three lines, you only you, had two takes. Yeah, it's like you're you're so so I I remember sitting there and watching those guys act and having having this, the, the sides in my hands, seeing, seeing, learning expanding right. the horizon it was the best school ever right and then lo and behold i finished that show and obviously you then i then i i started playing in like gazillion tv shows guest appearances three five six episodes right. you know that's when my career just just went you know it's just blossomed right, right? from that from right. one from that one series regular because that one casting agent really loved you so that's Absolutely. amazing so i'm forever grateful forever grateful right. yeah with with your Oscar nominated films, there's been two. So you have um, also War Witch, which mm -hmm. that was the had, first one. Yes, and that was in 2013. Tell me a bit about that movie and how that uh, that opportunity came to you. So War Witch at the time. Um, and so so we're, we're let me see. I auditioned for War Witch probably in 2011. Yeah, 2011. And uh, one of my very first acting school that I went to, even before university, I went to a school called the Montreal School of Performing Arts, MSOPA. And uh, the, the president of, of that school, Ms. Jo Simone, shout out to Jo, sir. Uh, she, she, she was the casting director for that show, for, for okay. the movie. For the movie, And okay. I, remember, I remember like it was yesterday, she sends me a message on Facebook. Hey, Ralph, how good are you with languages? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm uh, even if even if I'm not good, am I gonna you're say gonna I'm say, bad? You're gonna say, yeah, I'm good. I'll learn it. Like you, you know, that's what I am. I am great. I am great. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I have this director who is who who's who's uh who's about to shoot a movie in Congo, Africa, and mm -hmm. he, you know, why don't you come in and uh, audition for him at the school? And so I remember going going to the school and where where everything started for me. And right. this director's there, and the whole audition was it was an improv. Oh wow! Yeah, he would give me situations. This is what's going on. He was he was super spiritual, you know. This is what <laughs> very this is what. Yeah, very. This is what's happening. I want you to be this. You're mean, but you're nice. You're this, <laughs> but you're that. You know, it's it's, it's, so, it's just so funny sometimes how they, how they just think that we could just. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever they said may, you know, even if it makes no sense, you're like, yeah, uh-huh, sure, all right. <laughs> and in your head, you're like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? <laughs> and so I went for it, I went for it, and uh, I, and then I got, I got the part. I got, I got, I got okay. one of the parts. And then two weeks later, I, I was in Congo. I was in Congo, oh, Africa. Wow. Yeah. So I spent, I spent a month out there. I spent wow. a month out there. And the funny thing about shooting that film, which was special, just like, uh, just like Invincible. The director decided to shoot the movie chronologically. Okay, because that doesn't so, usually happen, right? Doesn't it almost never yeah, happen? They, it's, it's always too, it's yeah. too expensive. It's too expensive, yeah. right? So let's say you know, I remember I was there for a month and I was on page five and page twenty six. Right. So in between five and twenty six, I was just hanging. <laughs> yeah, a I vacation. Yeah. Yeah, I was just discovering Africa, my first time in the motherland. So right. it was great. It was great. But the movie itself, you know, you had you had this you had this beautiful marriage between uh, Congolese people mm. 
and Canadian Quebecer people working together and to create this beautiful film that, that we did. And it was nominated for Best Foreign Language best, Film? Yeah. Best best Foreign Film, yeah, Best Foreign right. Film uh, right. at the twenty the 2013 uh, uh, Oscars. So right. at the time, I remember, you know, I, I thought, I, I had no idea about how Oscars worked, but right. in my head, I, I already saw myself on that red carpet, like, okay, <laughs> it's happening, I'm there, you know? And then to find out, you know, you make your way to Los Angeles, okay, you go to events, yeah. but we never got a chance. We never made our way to the ceremony. No. What, what, no, 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 production, what production did is, they had rented a house in Beverly Hills and mm -hmm. everybody, uh, you know, cast and crew and only the lead and the director and the producer uh, actually went to the to actual that. ceremony. Right. Yeah. And so we all got together at the house. But I remember sitting in that house, watching the Oscars and right. telling myself, this ain't going to be the last time, buddy. Right. This right. ain't going to be the last time. You know, I don't know when, but, it ain't go it, you know, it's not going to be the last time. Right. And then this year your film ended up there again. And so yeah. how was, yeah. how was this, how was the last weekend for you? Like sort of go over what it all encompassed. Well, this last weekend was very emotional for me, extremely emotional, uh, emotional because, uh, <laughs> I don't even know, I don't even know where to start, but I'll, I'll give you a little story. I'll give you a okay. little prelude. Okay? okay. So, uh, last month in February, I was mm -hmm. in Santa Barbara, for the Santa okay. Barbara Film Festival, okay. and I had the I had I had the honor and opportunity to present my my very first uh, 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 lead role in a short film at the Santa Barbara Film Festival. So I spent a week in Santa Barbara, but I flew in L.A. and I drove to Santa Barbara, and then on the way back I did the same thing. But on my last day before I before I flew back to Montreal, I went to uh, and at the time. Uh, at the time, we, we we were nominated, but I wasn't sure if I was going to go to the ceremony. Okay. So I drove on Hollywood Boulevard, parked my car, and I made my way to the Dolby Theater. <laughs> and I looked and I looked at everything. I looked at everything. I went up the stairs and I made my way all the way to the front door. And I was just like, I was manifesting that moment, but right. I was also like, but I was also trying to find some peace because I, I had, I, you know, I, I had gotten disappointed in 2013. And so I was, I was trying to tell myself, even if you don't make it to this, to the actual ceremony, your work has been recognized and you're there, take your bow and send it off. And right. so I, so I did the stairs and I walked out <laughs> and I remember seeing a security guard and I asked the security guard, I said, I just have one question for you. Could you just help me visual? Remember I told you the visualiz yeah, yeah. visualization. I said, help me visualize what happens to this place on Oscar night. And the guy smiled and <laughs> painted me the image. And, oh, wow. That's amazing. And I was just in La La Land, just looking <laughs> and visualizing that moment. And so the day that I was in that limo, making my way through security right. and through there was a there was a big uh, uh, pro Palestine protest going on. Right. Yes, they it, had it, actually know, had, had the Hollywood man, Boulevard closed down for a while. Was, the police yeah, had to be it, there. Yeah, yeah. It was insane. And I remember I had my glass of champagne, and it was tough for me not to hold my tears because it was right. just surreal, surreal. But I was proud. I was like, man. And so when I got out there, I already knew. Because everything that the security guy told me, <laughs> it, all, it, it was, was all there. It was exactly that. So people were looking at me like, "What's wrong with you?" Well, nothing. It's fine. It's cool. Just <laughs> another red carpet. Because because I, I already lived that moment so many times in my head. It was a beautiful moment. Beautiful. So you, moment. So you had vis visualized it, and then the security guard describing it to you. Man. He he clinched it for you, and then you showed up on the Oscar red carpet, and it all sort of came together for you. All together, all together. Yep. And how was the overall ceremony? Like, how was that for you? Just walking down that red carpet and just feeling the history. I, it, it was it was very hard for me to not to hold my tears. Mm -hmm. It was it was just it was so emotional. Uh, I, I was sad because you know my parents weren't with me, or mm -hmm. you know fellow actors weren't with me. Uh, you know people I care for. You know my love. You know people I love the most. 
So it was hard. It was hard because I, I wish I was able to just bring him with me. I remember right. FaceTiming my parents, just, <laughs> just the red carpet, and everybody was like in awe, you know, and that made my day. Because, you know, right. if, I, if, I, if I can make my family proud, man, I don't need nothing else. I don't need nothing else. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. What do you have in the works? What's your next? Where will we see you next? Where will you see me next? Well, you know, when, when, when we were talking about uh, uh, the ups and downs of acting, right. uh, I, I, was, I was extremely close to, uh, uh, to, to, to getting a, a, a huge, 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 huge opportunity. It was right. between me and somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I found out today that I didn't get it. Oh. Uh, and obviously, you know, obviously I'm bummed. But right. uh, yes. but you know what? My agent is great. Shout out to Eugenie Gaillard, uh, her agency and what they do. And you know what? She said she just said to me, Ralph, you're in the right path. You right. know, you've been doing you've been doing great things. Your work gets recognized. You'll get other auditions and bigger bigger opportunities are going to come. So I so right now I just came back and I'm I'm sort of getting back into the sink of things right, of auditioning Montreal, stuff right, like right. that in Montreal. Yeah. How did you get your agent? How did I get my agent? Well, she is uh wow. My agent is is what's what's the what's the biggest agency, one of the biggest agencies in LA? It's uh you have WME, you have Gersh, you have UTA. There's a name that I heard a lot. Well, <laughs> well you have CAA. CAA. There you go. So she's like the equivalent of CAA in Montreal. She okay. has like a, she's got a, she's got like a huge uh, array of A-list actors. It's a very small, it's not big. And uh, I got, I, I, um, I got in contact with her because I was working on a film with her, one of her A-list actors that okay. I shared, I shared scenes with. And we had a great uh, uh, conversation and he was like, you got to speak to my agent. And I said, you know how it works. I, I can't just call up your agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he vouched for me. Okay. And, then, and then after that we met and then, uh, yeah, she's been, we, I've been together. With, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So Thank shout out you. to Bruno Marcin. Shout out to Bruno Marcin. I have to yes. say that. And anyone else you would like to give a shout out to anyone else who's like been very instrumental in your career, helping you, assisting you, or maybe someone who gave you some negative feedback that, that oh, pushed you along the way. The num- <laughs> Could be positive number- or negative. Oh, the number one guy is my father. Number one okay. guy is my father. Lionel Prosper, my dad. Uh, my dad's a tough dude. Um, we, I mean, we butted heads a lot. My father, you know, my father left Haiti uh, after he graduated from med school. Okay. He was already. He's all, and then once he got to Montreal, they didn't. They didn't uh, uh, recognize. Uh, they didn't recognize any of his diplomas, right. and he had to start off from scratch again, do all the exams oh, and wow. then be, and, and then become a doctor. And so once again, if I, as I look back, I didn't understand when I was a kid, because at the time it was only my mom working and my dad was at home with this with these huge books, always studying day in and day out. But as right. a kid, you don't really understand. But as, as you as you take a step back and you see the, the, the sacrifices and the hard work and and the work ethic and the drive and the belief he had in himself, to do bigger things for himself. Mm. Once you understand, once you understand that, everything changed. So the day I understood what hard work meant, mm. well, what my father did for his career is what I, I what is what I'm doing now for myself. So right. there's there's never enough effort. Time is never enough. <laughs> so you you so you have to figure it out and always give it your best. So my 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 number one inspiration in life, because of because of what I've seen, because of what I've witnessed, is my father. Mm. What does success look like to you? What is success to you? Success to me is to be, to have a family, to see my kids grow, to coach my kids at basketball, mm-hmm. uh, to have, uh, to have, to, to have uh, my own nonprofit organization to help, to, to help the less unfortunate and the unfortunate ones and to choose how many projects per year I want to work on. Right. That is, that's, this is the imagery that, that I want for myself and my family and my wife and everybody. Oh, speaking of that, how, how do you deal as an actor? Do you find relationships hard to work on or to maintain? It's difficult. It's very difficult. It's difficult because, uh, 
you know, the actor's life is it's never stable. Uh, and I don't think it, you know, I, I've never believed in just, I've never believed in being with an actress, just two unstable people, you know, <laughs> it's complicated. It gets complicated. So you always, so I, in my experiences and most of my actor friends, we've always sort of like, you know, connected with people outside of our world where, you know, where we, where we, you have we one be, stable person and one creative yeah. person doing whatever, yeah, right? That's it. And so it's, it's, it, you know, it, I've had rocky relationships. I have, I've had difficult relationships and uh, it's still in the works. And so, but at the same time, uh, the older I get, the easier it is for me to express what I need. Because often sometimes I find that artists have difficulties expressing exactly what they need. So, which makes it 10 times more difficult for someone who's not in that, in that environment to understand. So you have to be able to express yourself and really say what you need. Hmm. Meaning like what you need emotionally or physically or all of the above. Just all everything. of the above, all of the above, all of the above. Yeah. Okay. For someone living outside of the U S do you feel that they need that you, do you yourself feel like you need to come to LA eventually, or you think there's enough work for you in Montreal or what, what are your thoughts on, you know, being an actor outside of the LA system? So as a kid, I mean, as a kid, um, uh, younger, I'll, I'll probably say 15 years ago, you know, I, for the longest of time, I had the LA dream. I really wanted to. Um, and then, you know, then you start getting work in Montreal and I work in French and in English. So, right. you know, I work on, I work on both ends and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay for myself, but I'm still not where I want to be. But as you get older, you're like, okay, am I, you know, am I really now at a point where I just, just could just pack up my suitcase and just get up in my van and, you know, drive, I don't know. Drive I mean, across I'm, North yeah, America yeah. from Montreal yeah. to LA and yeah, no, start over. No. Yeah. yeah, no, that's not even, it's not even an option for me anymore. But I have to say that going, spending four days in LA for the Oscars, meeting all these actors, these producers, uh, 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 writers and whatever, and people giving me, you know, telling me, hey, we see you in LA. Hey, you know yeah. what? You need to, you need to get yourself a manager. Hey, I'm telling you, you know, your, your, your skill set is where it needs to be to have a fruitious career in, uh, uh, in, in LA. Los Angeles. Yeah. In Los Angeles. And so now, you know, I was like, that the fire and the desire of testing the market is there again. So okay. that's, other, that's also what I'm trying to get going with my agent and also the connections that I've developed in the past four days. Because you know how it is. You can't wait too long because then people yeah. forget you. Yeah, yeah, you have to keep the the coals high. You got to keep that ball rolling. That's exactly, it. exactly. It. Keep the right. momentum going. Yes, definitely. That's it. That's it. So, how do we find you on social media? So my so you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is official Ralph Prosper, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That, that that's, that's my good. professional link. Professional link. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And is there anything else you would like to mention before we go today? Is there anything we should look out for coming from you? Acting-wise? Okay. Anything to look out for acting-wise. Or, or anything-wise, like life-wise. No, <laughs> no, no, acting-wise, acting-wise. I really, I, I, I know that greatness and, 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 and real, um, real tough character roles, character choices will come my way and it will be some, it will be performances that will not be forgotten. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you. you for it was time. so great thank meeting you, you yes. when you were here in LA. Absolutely. And, and um, I hope to see you on a screen soon. And, you know, maybe next year you'll be back at the Oscars and we'll get to run into each other again. Exactly. So, okay. Well, cool. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today thank on you. Shout Out thank with you. Sage. And we will see you next time. So bye, everyone. Bye, Ralph. Bye -bye. Thanks so Thank much. You. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye. -bye.